Edge bending and laminate trimming are something a woodworker has to deal with on a regular basis. With laminate trimming, typically, the, the stock would be clamped in a vise vertically, and the router would ride on the vertical edge with a pattern bit or a template bit. Either case, it has a bearing that rides on the veneer, and the cut and flutes of, of the bit will trim the laminate or, or band edging flush with, with the work surface. Today, we're going to show you a, a better way of doing that using two fixtures. The fixtures are going to set on a rubber pad. It's a real ag aggressive, tenacious material, so the workpiece doesn't slide and you don't have any clamps in the way of the wood router. This is a fixture my dad made. It's simply a piece, two pieces of three-quarter inch plywood bolted together or glued together. This has a point mainly just to give you more bearing surface out by where the bit is. The plywood is screwed together. This radius is mainly cosmetic. Uh, it, it doesn't give you a lot of visual, but, but you have a pretty good feel. There's a knob placed over here, gives you more control. You use one knob on the router and one knob on the, on the fixture. Sometimes working on a, on a small work area where, you, where you're only riding on this portion of the work surface, it tends to be a little tippy making this jig much, much more useful for, for larger objects. With this fixture, I'm going to actually do what they call a climb cut. I'm going to feed with the rotation of the bit. And I'm doing that so that I have this plywood as a backer, as a support, so I don't get chip out on the opposite side that I won't be able to clean up later. Now to set the bit, I'm actually going to use a piece of paper as a spacer. And I'll bring that bit just down so that I feel friction on the paper. Oh, so you've still got the jig on the paper. There we go. All right, thank you, John. All right. Okay, I just feel a little friction on that paper. Okay. Jim, let's uh, let's test this on a piece of okay. of waste stock before we spoil the real thing. I think that's a good idea. My experience is that a piece of plywood is actually a little bit wavy, mm -hmm. and and sometimes you'll kiss a high spot, and then suddenly for a long time you won't make contact. So you might. Sweep it around and see if we make any contact at all. That's a good idea. I can, in fact, I can see the ripple on the top surface of this. Yeah. Okay. John, I think I'm going to raise that bit. Maybe another another fold in the paper. I can see a little swirl mark here. Yeah, maybe two folds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What do you think, John? I'm happy with the surface quality of that oak. I can see all the rays, and, and, and it's nice and smooth. But you can still see it's proud by about the thickness of the piece of paper. It would have been, I think, a lot more beneficial if this piece was larger, and I, and I always could have the work surface on, on, the, on the plywood itself. True. Well, I want to show you this uh, other fixture that was designed, in fact, by a friend of mine. Um, it has, it's similar in that it, it has a, a surface that will ride on the, on the veneered area, but you'll notice that the bit, instead of being extending beyond a point, is very captive in, in a hole, 
And it has a fence here that I will adjust. I'll separate it by the thickness of the edge band and then a little bit more, a little bit more to allow for the glue and the other uh, crumbs that are going to form it. So you're that. actually just going to be riding this rail exactly. as a guide. Exactly. And I, the reason that I'm very keen on this is because I think that the bit is so securely supported that I'll be able to push it closer than, than you did on, uh, with it, the paper thickness. And furthermore, I won't have to search. I can, I can literally do this sort of operation in my sleep. But would you, would you be restricted if you had the band, edge banding on all four sides? What would you do when you get to a corner? Well, I would have to do this. I would have to do this, uh, do uh, the opposite sides before uh, placing the edge banding on the edge. So I'm, I'm limited and I can't get into a corner. But uh, I, when I do do the edge banding across the end grain, I'm not as much in danger as, as you are with that jig uh, where I'm sweeping the, the bit out over the veneered area. I very carefully controlled how much of the bit can be exposed like to the that. veneer. And so the original sanding job on the veneer that usually is pretty good mm -hmm. is never tampered with. Sure. So uh, what I'll do is, is follow these two edges now on this side. Okay. Good to me, John. I see a little bit of glue. A little bit of glue, and you can see, I think, I perceive the irregularity of the plywood and that we're dead flush here. Yeah. And then it, then it drifts into a slight rise sure. and then it's flush again. Sure. So I think that maybe can be accounted for there. Mm -hmm. But I think it's a, a significantly closer than yep. before. Oh, definitely. Jim, one of the things uh, that I like about this jig is uh, we're doing a climb cut again. But because the jig holds the bit in a regular relationship to the surface, mm -hmm. you can brace yourself against the, 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 the fight of the, of the climb cut in a regular way, sure. whereas the other jig permits a random position. Sure. And because we're removing so little wood, it's uh, insignificant. Exactly. The, the counter force is insignificant.